Hello and welcome to episode 181 of the Book Binge, another top 10 video, but this one for something a little bit different insofar as being some of the strangest books on my TBR. Some of these books you've probably not heard of, some of these books maybe you've heard of but been too scared to try, some of these books maybe you just have read and they were just kind of weird. That's basically the gist of this video. It's going to be a trip of a list, and I'm going to sound like an idiot with most of these because of how weird some of them are, especially to people who have read some of them. Also, this is not necessarily an order of weirdness. This is an approximate order of interest with some of the books. Generally speaking, we'll kind of see what happens. Without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into the video and start off with an honorable mention. Let me make sure that I, I yeah, 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 based on the time that this video is coming out, it should be fine. The first honorable mention is going to be Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. At the time that I'm recording this, it is an honorable mention because I have already started it. At the time that this video releases, it's an honorable mention because I've probably already finished it. So it would be pretty high up on the list, maybe even number one, if not for that fact. You see, like I've kind of made a little bit of progress i'm recording this in may so it's quite early but i've been enjoying it so far but it is definitely a little bit of strange and would absolutely be worthy of being considered a strange book on my tbr another honorable mention and is one of the and is actually the only book on this list actually i think that i don't own is catch 22 by joseph heller which is apparently a satirical world war ii story about a bomber pilot i actually didn't know that it was satire before getting a little bit more information about the book. I know basically nothing else about it, but I do have a minor interest in it. That said, let's move into the actual top 10 of the list itself. The first item is one that uh, people have been bugging me about for a really, really long time. It became kind of a meme to bug me about it. Uh, one that several friends really enjoyed and like I said, it became a meme for them to recommend it to me all the time. It got to the point that they actually pissed me off a year ago. Perfume by Patrick Suskind. Suskind? I don't know how to pronounce his name, actually. Sorry, this cover is so, you know, in invisible. Invisible is not the word. It's uh, hard to make out in the video because of how small it is. Don't mind the sticky note that's hiding a spoiler for another item in the list later. Uh, I don't know much about the book besides the fact that it's like sort of magical realism to an extent, so that's fun. I will get to it someday. Reen, don't worry. It is on the list for a reason, but it is one that people definitely bothered me about one too many times. Number nine on this list is something that is seems to be significantly darker than Perfume is. This is 2666 by Roberto Bolaño. I came to learn that this is a much longer book than I thought it was before I ended up buying it. Did I buy it or did someone gift it to me? I think I bought this one. Either way, actually, no, this was a gift to me for Christmas, I think. Maybe I'm misremembering. Whoever gifted this to me, remind me so I can thank you because I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Apparently, this tells various different storylines that intersect eventually, but it is five mostly uh, unrelated storylines for the most part, I think. Maybe I've got that all wrong, but it is often a very satisfying type of novel that tells separate storylines that intersect and become connected later on in the book. I don't know too much about what it's actually about, just that it reached similar heights for Reen personally as uh, uh, IJ, which is Infinite Jest, one of his favorite books, and is hype for is one of the main reasons why I decided to actually read it. Uh, so, you know, that, that definitely encouraged me, and it is a hit with several other friends too, so, you know, it is on the list because of that. Number eight is Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, a novel told in many storylines written different styles slash genres in a unique format that alone has me intrigued. It does seem to be one that's a bit shorter, Maybe not super easy to read per se, but definitely one I could see myself getting into pretty heavily if I get into the concept and go into it with the right mindset. I think DJ Nana might be the only friend of mine who's read it. I think Clayton has actually read it relatively recently too, but it is a favorite of Nana's for sure, so I want to try it. Even Jonathan uh, from Words and Time, that channel, I recommend his channel very highly, talking about the book made me want to give it a try. Number seven is the other book that I have on digital, but one that I'll probably grab a physical copy of due to the structure, Pale Fire by, oh, what's his name, Vladimir Nabokov? Uh, sorry, again, it's kind of 
hard to actually see on the cover. It's darker in this room than it normally is when I record on account of Wyoming weather just being incredibly bipolar. Pale Fire is the weirder of the two Nobokov books that I have on my TBR between uh, Pale Fire and uh, Lolita, but both of these books are on my TBR. Pale Fire is the one that I'm including on this list, though, because of its structure and stylistic decisions. Apparently, it is a fictional foreword. Apparently, it has a fictional foreword that discusses the fictional poet that wrote the fictional poem Pale Fire. Then you go back and forth between reading the poem and the commentary on said poem. And all of this is like fictional stuff. It all exists within the you know, the structure of the novel. So something that you kind of go back and forth on while reading that seems very interesting and intriguing. Lolita is something a little bit different, but I would like to read both of them eventually. Number six on the list is here on account of me basically requiring myself to include McCarthy on this list somewhere. And this is, I think at the time that this video releases, probably the only McCarthy book that I have not read yet. Well, of his actual 12 novels. Blood Meridian, the last original McCarthy novels, or the last first time McCarthy reads for me. I was going to say in this video that I would like to read all of his books eventually, but I have read all of the 12 of them except for this one now. So, you know, we'll see what happens with this one. It's definitely the one that I've been most scared of, part of the reason why I've pushed it off so far. But yeah, next up, moving into the top five of the weird and strange books on my TBR is a triad of books because it's more like an author in general this is tom and tom, tom and pinches that is not the name thomas pinchin so here i am holding up v against the day and gravity's rainbow i would have included the crying of lot 49 if i had not read that a few months back and really liked it actually which encouraged me uh because i think i'll like v a lot because of it um, I gotta get to Thomas Pynchon someday a little bit more fully than just The Crying of Lot 49. These are the books that I have on the TBR for now. Like I said, I already read Crying of Lot 49, but I'm going to read V next. Then I'll probably read Against the Day, even though it seems, well, it, it is the longest of the books here, but it is the one that I'm like more most actively interested in for one reason or another, which might be kind of strange. And then like, maybe I'll read Gravity's Rainbow, but I don't actually know for sure if I'm going to do that. It it scares me i will i will confess that book definitely scares me a lot another book that kind of scares me seeing it right here on the stack of books is another gigantic one and scares me primarily because it's heavy magical realism terra nostra by carlos fuentes historical fiction magical realism of the discovery of america told as if it was told to you by the painter bosch instead of your history teacher that was the blurb that Patrick gave me with this book. Let me read it one more time for you. Terra Nostra is historical fiction, magical realism of the discovery of America told as if it was told to you by the painter Bosch instead of your history teacher. This one is a big hit with a couple of my friends, but it is magical realism, uh, which hasn't been a super kind genre to me of the few entries that I've read so far, uh, especially the one other entry of you know, South American uh, or Spanish, I suppose. Magical Realism was not a hit with me, the one that I've read before this one. So we'll see how things go, but I'm definitely willing to give it a shot. It's one that people have spoken highly enough that I'm willing to try it uh, despite my reservations. It is surprisingly high on the priority list for this video, but you know, that's just kind of the way things go sometimes. Next up, we are finally moving into the top three of this list. First, in the top three, at number three, is House of Leaves by Mark Daniel Lewski. One of Reen's favorite books, and you might notice this is kind of a trend, a lot of the books that I've included in this list are Reen's favorites. This is because he is a friend of mine who has actually made a point of trying to recommend books that he thinks I will genuinely enjoy, or pitching books in a way that might actually make me interested in reading them, rather than just saying, oh wow, yeah, this is the craziest, hardest book I've ever re read. It's also the best book I've ever read. You should read it, and like leaving it at that. Cough, cough, cobby. Anyways, House of Leaves is one of his favorites, and I think... I'm going to get to this maybe next month at the time that this video releases in October. There's always the chance that it doesn't happen just based off of, you know, the uncertainty of TBR scheduling. Things have been kind of crazy this year. I've not been able to keep things consistent for the most part. So maybe this will happen. Maybe it won't. If it doesn't, 
it will be October 2025 for sure. This is both intimidating and not because if you happen to open the book to any random page, you'll see some, you know, dense material. You'll also see some confusing, like, mirrored material. It's, you know, I'm trying to find a good example of some of this stuff. Stuff with, like, crossed out text, text in different colors. But there's also plenty of text that... Or plenty of pages that just have little to no text. So, like, you know, it, it might not be as hard as I think its reputation has kind of led it to be. But, like, maybe it will also be difficult. I don't know. We will see when I get to read it here eventually. But it is one that I'm interested in, thanks to Reen. One that I'm also interested in, thanks primarily to Reen, is another satirical book. Lord of Dark Places by Hal Bennett. This is apparently satire of the South of the United States during the 60s or so again i don't know much beyond that and the fact that several of my friends really enjoyed it we'll see how things go that's basically the only thing that i can say about several of the books on this list but number one on this list is kind of a tie between two books uh because they're the same author and i'm really excited to read both of them at the time of this video's release there's a chance that i've read one of them already if i have read one of these books already this year then the other one i'll probably be reading next year but I suppose I should stop beating around the bush and just say this is Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami as well as 1Q84. These are also sort of magical realism in their own way, but kind of like in a different way, not like the way that Terra Nostra or anything like that is. I'm thinking I'll go through Hard Boiled Wonderland sometime you know, sooner, assuming I haven't already gotten to it. If I haven't gotten to it already, it will be one of the earlier books I read in 2025. Uh, 1Q84, I definitely want to read in 2025, though. Whether I'm able to get to Hard Boiled Wonderland or not before it, this one I'm tentatively planning to be my basically long summer read, kind of the way that Infinite Jest is. I know this one won't be that difficult, but I am planning it to be like maybe June, July, August or something like that. Maybe April, May, June. Who knows what I will decide to do, but I do want to read this book sooner than later. For some reason, it just has me super intrigued and interested just in terms of concept. Um, Reen has definitely sold Murakami to me as an author that I definitely want to give a good shot Seems like he's similar to Stephen King in certain specific ways. And with these two stories specifically, it seems like part of the draw is discovering how disparate and separate stories come together over time, which I think I mentioned earlier with one of the other books, I think with 2666 actually, that that could be a super satisfying thing to do when it comes to plot. So I'm excited to give these a shot. But that makes up the end of this list. That is the list. If there's some other very strange or unknown or kind of weird and wacky books that uh, are not on this list and you happen to know about them, I will tentatively invite you to shout them out in the comments below and see which of them I've even heard of and which of them I'm interested in. If you happen to give a good pitch for them, maybe I'll put them on the TBR a little bit sooner. We will see what happens, but thank you for watching this video. If you did, I'll be back in the next video whatever it may be.